Let's talk about surprises uh, for 2020. For Let's year. put on the crystal ball here. Uh, what, what, what do you think well, is going to be important? We're finally going to get these non-transparent or periodically disclosed ETFs coming out, actively managed, but you don't see the daily disclosures on them. Uh, we'll see a bunch of them launch. I'm, I'm predicting in the first quarter. I think what the surprise will be is there'll be a surprising amount of money in these funds out of the gate. I think you'll see institutions show up to play for real. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of half billion dollar funds this time next Can year. Can I ask a dumb question? Yeah. Go ahead. What's a non-transparent ETF? Um, so a non-transparent uh, ETF is just one that's not showing you its full portfolio every single day. And that's really a, a key thing for a lot of active managers who have stayed out of the ETF space because they don't want to show their book. You. That's really it. Makes a lot of sense. Okay, what else? Uh, surprises for you? Look, surprises for me would be things that I think have, have there's been a fundamental call on this many different times. Emerging markets are one place where uh, the EPS, you're supposed to be getting growth out of emerging markets. If you're an investor, the reason you invest in emerging markets is you want some growth premium to deal with the risk premium. I think we're finally going to get, you know, a five or six percent EPS uh, surplus overdeveloped markets. I also think that miners, and if you look at the basing we've seen in in a lot of the core commodities, in in, in I think we've seen a basing in interest rates. Uh, I think the trade dynamics are part of this. So I think an XME, which has a free port and a lot of steel companies, also has a lot of room to rally. Non-transparent, huh? Non-transparent, semi-transparent, periodically disclosed. By the way, those are kind of yeah, naughty words market, typically. Yeah. I know. Non-transparent. Yeah. I've been my whole career fighting for transparency. How about fractional shares, uh, for example, Will? I mean, that kind of big, a lot of, a lot of people feel ETFs have been held back by the fractional share issue, particularly in the 401k space. Can yeah. that change in 2020? Yeah, I think it could be. I mean, fractional shares has always been a part of the 401k argument. You know, in other words, um, proliferation of ETFs and 401k plans. You know, in order to, to buy a lot of those, you need fractional shares. I think fractional shares also means, with the advent of commission-free trading, um, we might see more direct indexing, more products uh, in the market that maybe get rid of some of the core ETFs altogether. Yeah, totally agree with that. I think seeing somebody like Schwab, they'd be the obvious people to come to market. They've already got the technology baked here. They've yeah. talked publicly about their interest in direct indexing, about their interest in fractional share trading. They led the market after interactive brokers on the no commission trading. So I think Schwab is the one to watch. Okay, let's keep an eye on that.